counts down. I'm counting up from the time that the stream actually started. <laughs> All so, right, we'll start people... on 36. <laughs> One, two. Uh, but welcome to the Enjoy Stick show. And I'm going to tweet Hi. it out for some reason and transition to our faces instead of our logo. I don't know why. I, focus testing, you know, they they tend to like just the logo better. But We should put the logo on our heads. Like yeah, for, just like, yeah. like those paper masks that they make for like... Well, just anytime you want a paper mask, I guess. I see them a lot in like... Only more terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, we so were talking up, before Steve? the show, and we've gone over everything that we have to say. That's right. So, so I'll see I, you next week. I, no, I, I vote for like an hour, hour and a half of just awkward, like, yeah. So, how about the weather? Dude, for- Dude, that's that's totally fine with me. Like, I, I had one of those days where, like, you only got, like, three or four hours of sleep, but there's nothing in particular that woke you up. It's just like, I'm, well, fuck, I'm awake, and I can't go back to sleep. Yeah, so now I, I'm just a zombie today. I feel like, because we've been staying, we were, we were trying to go to the gym in the mornings before work, but to do that, that means we have to get up at, like, six, which to me is an ungodly hour. Yeah, but what the um, fuck are you, Batman? Like nobody can, <laughs> nobody can be expected to do that, right? Well, and in order to do that, I have to go to bed by like ten or eleven, which is almost impossible because you find there's like so many things that you want to do in an evening that, like, it doesn't work. Yeah, so, my sleep clock makes that impossible. Like, I go to bed at around ten, maybe three times a year. <laughs> um, it's difficult, but. Uh, yeah, so this week, so that kind of worked for a couple days last week, but now this week is like that rebound where it's like your body's like, what the fuck are you doing? So it's like you want to wake up at 6, but you're not going to bed until like 2. And yeah. Yeah, yeah I uh, I started doing adding some stuff to my workout routine and uh, just to, like shit that I never really thought about doing since like, because they were just like weird exercises. To, like for me, like, like leg squats and like planks and stuff like to me those were just weird things you did in high school they weren't <laughs> they like i didn't uh, consider them real exercises yeah and I, like people are like actually they're some of the best exercises you can i know do. that's what i was gonna say everybody at our gym's like you have to do squats squats are the most important do squat i fucking hate well because i'm a human being even people that do squats hate squats but that, dude squats fucked me up mm-hmm. man like because because they don't seem hard at all when you're like, so I, you know, I go online and I read about like proper form and what you should be trying to well, do with every squat. Yeah. And they're like, and they're like, what? Well, considering like I do a pretty decent amount of like, you know, push ups and all that shit, like when the thing was like, all right, just try to do like 20. And it's like, you know, I got to 30, but I was like, I, I felt like I've collapsed in my chair. I could not walk after 30 goddamn squats. I remember last year at one point I was doing squats and lunges like every other day or every third day. And lunges I think are worse. I, if I had to do one, I'd do squats over lunges. Lunges are like, I imagine when I not say if, but when you go to hell, <laughs> it's just lunges and like donuts just out of reach. Like that's why you're doing the lunges. You're trying to get to the donuts that you can never get to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there was one time I was like, okay, I'm going to up the, cause I would hold weights while I did, but like when I say hold weights, it'd be like 10 pounds because I suck at squats and lunges. Well, squats, it was a little more, but so I upped it a little bit and I think I did like 30 of each and I couldn't walk for like three days. Like literally, like when I went up the steps, I had to like fall to my knees and like crawl on my hands and legs up the, the steps. So I was like, well, that was stupid. Yeah. Yeah, like I tried to go like downstairs because I'm I'm always the brightest snowflake, so I don't get like water ready like before I do the workout. So after I'm done with the workout, I'm like, man, I need some water. And just like trying to go down the stairs, I'm like, just I sound like a complete drunk, just <laughs> fucking yeah. stumbling and shit, and like tripping on myself. And, like I'm gonna kill myself and trying then- to get healthy. And then planks, those are one of those things that I don't mind them because they're easy. And when I mean easy, I mean they're like easy to... Mechanically easy. Exactly. Like, they're hard as shit. Well, and it's like, that's one of those too. Like I do them for about 30 seconds at a time and then I'll try to do like 
two or three set like yeah and that's about all i can do and it like but, i started doing them like i i like i because I, I once again i go online i read the proper form and i'm like that sounds easy that's basically laying down right. and I, it's like but but then like they're like yeah just hold it for a minute i was like i could hold that for fucking hours and then like <laughs> you realize like nope you, you do not you do well, not but, live an active lifestyle at all, Ben. And you're, <laughs> it's one of those sneaky to ones, too, it. though, because when I go down to, to do them, it's like for the first 20 seconds, it's like, yeah, I could be like playing ping pong while I do this or something. Like, this is so freaking easy. Can't be a workout. And then it's like all at once. All of a sudden, it's like your whole core is just like, yeah, fuck you. And yeah, you're just like, holy shit. I don't know about you, it? but like my whole body starts vibrating like I'm about to warp dimensions or something. Well, like, well that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like near the end. Like, I, I've. I started doing them at a minute and then like I just keep a timer and then like every night I do them like I try to do like five to ten more seconds. Um, so like right now I'm at like a minute 15. Uh, but he, like yeah by the end of it it's just as fucking hard as any other work. Like for some that like you literally you just don't move. Yeah, and you like you're fucking sweating by the <laughs> end of it. It's it's ridiculous. I know, you've- but it's a great, if nothing else, like it's supposed to be really good for you because it builds your core. I recently, uh, actually, my wife was telling me about it because she found it. Uh, we were both trying to incorporate more core stuff because you just really don't do that much. And traditionally, it's just like sit ups. And the thing that she's found is like, yeah, please don't do sit ups. They're terrible for you, which we should all already know, because if I do like four sit ups, I can do a million sit ups for whatever reason. I'm fat and out of shape, but I've always been good at them but they're yeah. just like terrible for your spine and everything else. But yeah, um, like, that's the thing. Like I switched over, like I was doing sit-ups and I was doing about like a hundred a night, um, which, you know, like, like I, I was seeing like the results of it, but then like I was talking to my friend last week and he was like, yeah, like they're just terrible for your joints and mm-hmm. all that shit. And it's like, and really like planks double it down and like they help your core, but they also are supposed to help your posture a lot which also helps your core. Um, and that like leads to every other exercise that you're doing, making it better. But yeah. And, but it, but it all sucks. Like I'm just like at this point where it's like, I'm committed to the routine, but I'm like, fuck, when do I actually feel better? Yeah. That's like, the weird it, thing. It took like, me, it li- took me days for like, now I'm at a point where I'm starting to feel like the strength in my legs and I have a little more bounce in my step from all the squats. But Fuck, dude, that that felt awful. No, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure, forever. though, it always just makes you feel terrible. That's why you get these people that are like, they look like the Hulk that's also then hulked out. It's because yeah. they keep waiting for that moment where you just feel strong, and you you feel strong for like an hour after you work out. That's that's when I come home and I'm like, yeah, like I feel like. I can tell I'm getting stronger and buffer and whatever. And then the next day you wake up, it's like no. Nope, I, I can't lift this fucking eraser. And um, it, it's <laughs> also frustrating is how none of it translates to anything else. Like we've been going to the gym forever. Uh, now we last week we only hit it a couple times because uh, we did some other stuff, and then this week it's Wednesday and we haven't been once yet. But uh, you know we've been working out quite a lot, especially compared to like the average person. So then now that the weather's nice, Thursday and Friday, both nights we took our dog and went on hikes. Which if you follow me on Twitter, you know because I. That's the one thing. That's like my food pics. It's my hike pics. I have to like post pictures. But um, so, but you feel like we've been working out for like four months now, and we'll work out for hour, hour and a half at a time. You know, I'll hit the not so much a treadmill. I've done it a few times, but I hate that. But uh, the elliptical yeah. and the bikes and stuff. You're like, I've got my cardio up. Fuck, we walk up one hill at the park, and it's like, okay, I can't breathe. <laughs> Like none of it translates Look to anything view, else. And then, like, right. I'm going blind. Right. My body is failing on so every So it's level. like, if you want to be better at hiking, like be more in shape for that, you have to hike. And then if you want to be more in shape for biking, you have to bike. Like it. Well, that's something I'm curious about. Like I haven't gotten back onto the treadmill, uh, since I started doing this, but I'm wondering if like squats will help me with that because last time I no, tried doing regular helps you treadmill with exercises, like, they it was just it was a nightmare on my legs like see it, i've got bad feet i felt and, like i had no strength to do it see i've got really bad feet and knees and whatever to begin with and i think we talked about that probably off the show though as i i used to run um 
the treadmill's like twice as bad on your feet and knees as actually running is. So that's just every time I try, every now and then I'm like, like you get that fresh air that just like fucking feels like it's going to collapse your lung. (laughs) <laughs> and shit. Well, there's like, the, just, yeah, there's that the like difference, but I just mean as far as impact because on the treadmill, since you're kind of you're stationary, really, you're more bouncing up and down. No, no, I I hear what you're saying. I, I'm just saying like actual running fucking sucks way harder than a treadmill. It does because it, and it's that double edge, like because every every runner has that. Well, no runner loves running when it's like a hundred degrees because you just die, like literally. But um. A lot of people like like the fall weather where it's like 60s and 70s and they're like, oh, that's perfect. And they're like, I like the colder, but they they each have their trade off. The colder is better for me, like muscle wise. But then, you, like you said, your lungs, it's like I might as well be breathing fire. Like, yeah. Well, that's like, you know, all of this sort of wraps up and like it's the big lie about like the health industry and stuff. Like you see all these healthy people and, you know, they're like there's something wrong with them mm-hmm. because like if really being healthy and living these healthy ass lifestyles was as good as a as good of a product as they're selling it as then everyone would do it you know but there's a reason that like people work out for a while and then like they're like fuck it i'm getting pizza yeah i'm just well, i'm just going to pizza that's why i'm pretty much convinced town, that your man. body like you just have a body type and it's like nope you can't change it too bad because there's I mean, so well, there, many people. There's some truth to that, but I think there's also some truth to that. Though. Like we're just naturally kind of suicidal. Like they, <laughs> in the not in the like we don't want to live sense. It's just we like a lot of other things more than living, and <laughs> right. it's. But yeah. it, that's what always kills me though is you get the people and then because then you always hear like man I've been working out and I haven't lost any weight and everybody's like well yeah but it's. 10% activity and like 90% what you eat. It's like, no, I fucking tried that before too. Like I've basically gone on a monk fast for like <laughs> two months and it's like, nope, still haven't lost a pound there either. I but have it, done nothing but meditate for two years. And, I am still the same size. And then I, I, there's people that I know that are like, you know, they're not going to be, Oh, I can play in the NBA or whatever athletic, but they're like in shape. They're like, relatively slim and pretty uh, you know strong but they don't work out at all and they like do nothing but eat pizza and like drink beer and it's like what, what the fuck yeah that was, that was me for like yeah. you know my life and this is like this is kind of the first year where i've been like i've noticed i've noticed shit i've noticed trouble in the waters and it's like you know what maybe you should try to curb this shit but <laughs> it probably won't work you yeah. know i'm too I like I'm too fucking weak willed. Like I'll see like like a bit of flab that I didn't notice before, and I'll I'll turn that into like I'll just give up. Just eat fucking cookie crisp and fucking. See, that's my problem too. Is I I'm all or nothing when it comes to that. Like if I decide like I'm not gonna I'm gonna eat I'll say 400 calories a day, which don't do that. That's literally starvation. But whatever. If I say something like that. I stick to it. I, I'm pretty good about that. But then if you have like one little cheat, like I was, I, you know, currently we talked about, I'm um, trying to lay off the carbs, but one day it's like, well, we were out somewhere that had, um, they have like the, the best burgers I've ever had. Like we had an elk burger, so it's elk meat, but it, whatever. So it's like, I, and I thought about getting it and then like taking it off the bun. And I'm like, this thing is a work of art. Anybody I am that not orders going that to take... insult. It would be an insult to the chef and myself. Exactly. To like, not engage in this. So yeah, I'm like, it's... I'm like, it's one bun, and you eat it, and then by the end of that day, I'd had that and like two beers and like French fries and nachos and cheese because it's like, well, I mean, I already ate bad, so I might as well keep eating bad. Like that's how my brain works. Like, see, my, my like my brain doesn't even go that far. Where it's. I just hit these points where it's like, fuck this. I want another pop dart. You know, <laughs> I I'm saw that. Keep, I, d- I was I'm waiting for a total tally going. and you didn't, I mean, you just said that you've had enough to like hate yourself. <laughs> I think I had like eight. Jeez. Like, I say geez, like it's like a shame, but that's I, more of a jealous geez. Cause I love pop darts. They're fucking amazing. And I haven't had them in forever. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, they come in those sleeves. Like they're the, they're just, I don't ever toast pop darts. Because to me, they're just like the ultimate like handy food. Uh, yeah, I prefer like, them. They're made perfectly for me because they're sweet and delicious. And you just like 
every sleeve comes with two of them, so they already know what a fucking pig I am. If I, if I, yeah, I could be wrong though, but I think they still list a serving as like one of them. Yet they package them as two. Or no, I think they've made that illegal to do that now for food. But yeah, you, you can do that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was something like that. But anyway, um, yeah, I like them a little warmed up, but I don't necessarily want them fully toasted. Like I like the warmth, but I like them to be yeah, I soft. Mean, and I mean, gooey. there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. But to me, I just, just got right out of the box. Got that's how I've always eaten them. That's how I, that's how I prefer them. Because it's like the ultimate like midnight snack thing, except my midnight stretches between the hours of noon to midnight, um, <laughs> and you just and you just don't I, I can't I I can't stop like it's just this like it, for me it's a fucked up like I have so many things in my life that just pull me to food besides besides the fact that I just I'm a I'm a fuck and I like to eat. Um, like I'm a stress eater. So like anytime I get stressed out, I turn to fucking junk food. And if I'm bored, I turn bored to fucking the, junk. Yeah. yeah. That's the big one for me. It's like, uh, I don't really feel like doing anything. There's nothing to do. I might as well stuff sh- like crap food in my face. Yeah. Like what type of meat can I put between these pop tarts? You know, it's and just then on top of that. I think it's, you get to a certain age. Cause I don't remember it being like this when I was like in my early twenties, like college age, but you, my age, it's like anything social has to revolve around food. So it's like, Oh, here's some old friends that we haven't seen for a while. Let's get together and do something. Let's go eat. We got to go out to eat. Uh, and then yeah. it's like, that's a fucked up thing. There was like, there was kind of a point, like, well, my group of friends, like, we don't really have that anymore. But, uh, I mean, there, you do hit an age where it's like, all right, every literally every time we we go out and hang out, we're spending money mm-hmm. and, like, and, and buying food because, or some like, shit. Like, the thing is, when you're in your 30s, if you go to, like, a abandoned grocery store parking lot and, like, yeah. play car rodeo, <laughs> there's some major legal fall out there <laughs> right. so yeah like all the stupid free shit that we used to do you can't do as an adult but it also it's like it's what people wanted to do so like now you know like me and my group of friends a lot of times our habit is you know every week we get together and play board games and shit and we already bought those games so it's not like you know we're buying a new board game every week but like other friends of mine is like if we told them that's what we were doing, they would be like, fuck that. We we're going to the bar or yeah. we're going to this pub house and like, cause they have fucking great burgers and shit. It's like, holy fuck dude, my wallet and my, <laughs> my life can't afford that. No. And again, the most frustrating part about that for me is it's like, Oh, we'll, we'll go to this sports bar that we go to all the time. Cause it's great. And it's like, cool. How come you guys are still like way skinnier than me? <laughs> How come you guys are at sports like, bars? Like, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's yeah, the that, Joystick that's Health the, Hour. Yeah, that's the diet update. Um, except not a diet. It's, I mean, everybody's on a diet. It's just an incredibly poor one. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. A very self destructive one. But, yeah, this is a video game show. Yeah. And, and I I've got to play a little bit more. I, I wanted to start with ukulele, get that one out of the way, because I played a little sure. bit. I still haven't played a ton more. But, uh, I did. I would have it beat by now. You need to. I don't know. You need to get guy. it together. The reason I haven't played a ton more is because it kind of sucks. <laughs> like <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. Uh, it's and I don't know. And maybe I just haven't found where to check. Like cause, you know, it's all about collectibles, and I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. Although they just seem to like literally every five minutes add a new collectible on top of all the ones you already have, but. Um, I haven't found a way like each there's, I think five worlds to it. Like there's a hub and then like five zones or worlds or whatever. And then each one of those can be expanded. Um, you know, they stay within the same theme. Like if it's the ice level, when you expand it, it's still ice level stuff. But yeah, but anyway, um, each one has like 200 gold feathers you can find. And that's kind of your currency to buy new moves. And then they've got the, pages that you're supposed to find that's like the main thing in this game that you're collecting um and then there's all the other collectibles on top of that there's five ghosts per level and like these retro coins and i can't Mm -hmm. even name all the stuff but i haven't found a way to check on a specific level how many that you've got like 
in other words, out of the first stage, I can see that I've in total collected like 187 feathers, but some of those are from the second level and some are from the hub world. And I can't figure out how to tell how many I've got from the stage itself, which is really frustrating. And I, and there's got to be a way. I would hope so because Banjo. that's like, like the, that, if you're a collectible Banjo, person, that was... that's the only way. Like imagine if it doesn't break it down by where it's at and you get to the end and there's two feathers left, but you have no idea what stage. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that, I, that there has to be some way to like view that because that like that was in they've had that down since the N sixty four. If they forgot that feature, then you, they really fucked up. Okay. Um, but but uh, you, my point is, yeah. I don't know. I have I know I haven't gotten everything from the first stage yet, but I've explored most of it and I've gotten a lot. But I got to the boss. And if that's how the rest of these bosses are going to be, and I know you mentioned that that was one of the, you know some people's gripes about the game, or just like the ridiculousness of the bosses, or at least some of them. The first well, stage, that, that first that first boss in particular, people were just like writing articles like, "Don't even try to fucking do it until you get the flying power up, and then just go back to that level because he's such a pain in the ass. It's not worth it." Yeah, I uh, I did it, so I'm I guess I'm the hardcore. But it, I it mean, was not I mean, fun. It could be, it, it I saw was, it get done, but it's just... It's not like fun I at have, all. It's just... Now, the only thing is, I was getting so mad because it felt like it was so just like... Again, it, it's not interesting in any way. It's You have to go up this ramp while logs are being rolled at you. But the, the game has ramps that some you can randomly like not walk up. They like, they're too steep, theoretically. Although there's right. other ramps that you can and just fine whatever, but you have a roll power. Like you can go into a roll and make it up the, the ramps. But once you go into the roll, you can't stop. The second you come out of that roll, you enter a slide that you can't, you know, jump or do anything. It just, you slide down to the bottom. So the whole thing is you have to roll up this big, long ramp to get to the top, but there's logs coming down at you in different patterns, but your roll controls like very, it's not a that's very a, tight, whatever. It's, that's, that's what I've seen of that game. And that's the thing that makes me most nervous about it is it like, it seems like you, you have to do that role a lot, but it's very fucking uh, loose. You. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then you get to the top and you like knock out the two teeth of this boss and then he blows you back down and then the logs come in a different pattern. So you get to do it again and you're like, fuck, because if you die, if you make it to stage two, but die, it starts over at stage one. Um, so then I finally got it past the stage two pattern and I knocked his teeth out and then he blows you back down and it goes to another pattern and you're like, come on. It basically makes you do the I same mean, thing I, three times. But you, you say that like, that's a new trope though of like the rule of three is a, like, it's an old joke now for everybody. It's just like, cause every, especially in platformers, yeah, you but that doesn't do the same thing excuse three times. like this, like terrible, terrible mechanic fight that they make you do three times. And it doesn't excuse it just because it's an old trope. Like, but the way the most... you say it is like, can you believe they make you do it three times? Absolutely. I can <laughs> all of these games fucking make you do it three times. I think my, my like statement at the end of that night, because I spent the first, that was Saturday. I think I played that. I spent like an hour, two hours playing bloodborne and there I didn't, you didn't there you play that. Just I didn't die that. once. Or I think, I, I think I died once I had gotten to the forbidden woods and then one of those you log died traps. The trap. yeah. yeah. Which I, I assume probably everybody did. Um, nope. And, <laughs> but it's like a one hit. I, I knew it was coming though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a one hit kill thing. And I, I say I assume everybody did. It's one of those things where when you die from it, you're you're like, well, I heard the click, and your first instinct in Bloodborne, whenever you hear something, should be to fucking roll because that's all you can really do. Well, that well, that's a fucked up one because like, whenever you hear or interact with any with anything in Bloodborne, the, like your tendency is to jump back and create distance so you can kind of manage a fight. But with a trap like that, you actually have to like roll to the side of it. Or forward. Um, yeah. Or well, yeah, or forward. Just you have to get the hell out of the way. Right. Um, if you roll back, you're just you gonna back, like do a yeah, stylish you, death. <laughs> you're probably gonna get right. knocked off a cliff or some shit. So yeah. so basically I played two hours of Bloodborne and died once. And then I played an hour and a half of ukulele and died like forty seven times. Um no, nah, it yeah. really wasn't forty seven times, but it was probably You died and, you died a lot. A you lot died more. A lot to, yeah. And at the end of the day, the important part is I had way the hell more fun playing Bloodborne 
Um, but well, that's that's not even fair because Bloodborne's well, just sure, amazing. Sure, sure. Um, I, I did that thing but today. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, but the, it goes back to what we always say about the Souls games is that they're fucking fair. Uh, and <laughs> exactly. Have a strong. And that's why it gets so frustrating. I I. I like I said, oh, well, go out with friends. We have dinner, but that's what we did two weekends ago. Is we saw some friends that we don't get to see a lot. And I was talking to one about because he's got a PlayStation Four. Um, we were talking about games we play, and I mentioned Bloodborne and the Dark Souls games. And he's like, "Man, I've never gotten into those. I I just keep hearing like that are so hard, and I don't want to deal with that." And it's like <sighs> you need to like that needs to go away. It, 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 <laughs> that's the that wrong is- yeah thing, and. and and they're difficult, but like I said, I think in between the two, ukuleles give me more more problems than Bloodborne. For whatever reason, Bloodborne kind of fits my play style. Like I was yeah. really worried, but um, well, I'm, like I I watched a video the other day about just sort of going over all the like cool things about Bloodborne, and like I was seeing a lot of comments and stuff from people on this video where, like I didn't know this, but a lot of people played Bloodborne and then they like they started to enjoy the regular souls games from playing bloodborne like because bloodborne teaches you certain things about how the souls games work in a way that's a lot more palatable than yeah it's probably like if you ironically it's like the well i guess dark souls 3 came out after bloodborne but like if you were to do that like caveman like ape evolution darwin chart thing yeah. Bloodborne would be more between what we're used to and the Souls games than the Souls game. Like, the Souls is a bigger jump. The biggest thing is that those games go against the hand-holding type conventions that we've been taught in most other games. It, they do everything yeah. fair, and mechanically, they're really, like, not... It's, it's not something like, oh, it doesn't make sense, you just have to figure it out. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense compared to what we're used to. Um, yeah. And I think Souls is the easier step between that. If you're coming from, if you haven't played them, Souls would probably be the better jumping in points than any of the Dark Souls games. Um, Dark Souls 3, I don't know. I felt like that one was a little, it was a good evolution of the Souls as far as that, that's concerned. But uh, most people aren't going to jump into a, <laughs> into the third installment of a series if they haven't played yeah, well, it. Well, I mean, that's a hard, yeah, that's a hard thing to ask of people. Um but I mean, it's also like they do a good, jo- good enough job of like if you care about like where the story connects or whatever, like you can do that. There's a lot of people who just play Souls just for the mechanics of it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and that it's was worth, another. That, that, that's the thing with Souls is, is we've talked about. I don't know why we have to re. I do know why because we're both like obsessed with them. But the lore is so deep and interesting, and like I could sit and watch lore videos all freaking day, but. You can also get through the Dark Souls series games, any one of them, on just the surface story, and it would be perfectly like satisfying. Like, yeah, it, it, because Dark Souls, I think, is more on the surface about a mood than a specific story. Like, who's this guy or who's that guy? But then once you, I don't know. It's just it's amazing. Yeah, that, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we don't have to talk it up like that. I did realize something else like like this guy made like a couple of videos about bloodborne and then like he made a video defending dark souls 2 and i thought that was kind of interesting in that like i'm in a weird spot where dark souls 2 where i don't think it's a bad game like a lot of souls purists but uh like like people are just like yeah after dark souls 1 they're like two is a piece of shit all you do is fight knights like i, I don't like i don't agree with that and i enjoyed the game fine but anytime anybody defends the game, I don't agree with those defenses. <laughs> where, where it's yeah. like they're trying to defend things about Dark Souls 2 where it's like there's a lot of bosses where it's like kind of the multi... Like I talked about it with the Dark Souls 3 DLC, uh, like the multi-enemy boss fights and how I don't really like that structure because I no, don't think it lends itself fault the because best we, of that combat. The Ornstein and Small fight from when everybody's like, oh, wow, like pinnacle of gaming fights it's so hard but it's also epic and i think well, I mean, from software was like okay let's... Dark Souls, like the first real boss in dark souls is the two gargoyles yeah, that's true too um, they, they they make it more palatable because one only has like half the health or whatever uh but it's still you know that same structure and people defend it like oh well you just didn't learn how to not lock on to fight and it's like that's 
not why the multi boss like multi enemy bosses in Dark Souls Two are terrible. Like because I did learn that lesson. I learned it in Dark Souls One. It's just like there are certain bosses that are just like you go into like a cathedral and it's just a crowd of fucking zombie people and you have to kill like the two priests Mm -hmm. and and there's nothing hard about them. You just run in a circle and hit them and then fucking back off and dodge the spells and like just don't stand still. Like it's not like it's that thing of like, oh, it's it's weird because it's the exact opposite of what they're always arguing against is like people being like, oh, get good. But it's their version of get good. Yeah. And it's like, it's not hard. It's just a badly well, designed fight. That like, specific one that you were just talking about, for, I assume you mean from three, the crimson. No, I was talking, no, I was talking about one specifically from two. Oh, okay. Um, okay. It, like there is one in three, but that one's I like, I think that one's a little better. Well, that one um, from a fight perspective was still relatively shallow for me. Now it might've been cause I had summoned help. And I can't remember if yeah. it was NPC or not, but that also helps because it divides the attention. But I thought mechanically it was pretty because it was kind of the same deal, like you like said. There, it's there just was a, circle until you cool find a glowing. But I thought it it even though mechanically it wasn't like necessarily the most clever fight or most challenging. Story wise, it was a really good fight. Like uh, it had absolutely. a good feel to yeah. it. Uh, and like, and I give you know, and I say, and my big defense for Dark Souls too is that. I think the lore in it is amazing. Um, you know, so like, yeah, there's a lot of fights that I didn't enjoy mechanically, but yeah, from a story perspective, I thought they were very interesting. Um, but just like, yeah, I think in three, they throw a pretty neat wrench into the same idea as the dark souls two fight, but it's just like, it, it, it's still not a great fight, but it, I think it's better just because like, there's sort of this, unknown like time limit you're kind of on where it's like they are corrupting the entire fucking arena yeah and you're like you, you you have to fight through this crowd and get to the guy like this one there's no in dark souls 2 there's no fighting through the crowd like all the zombies are like fucking on the ground basically and they're just like if you stand still they'll hit you but you probably won't be so you'll probably never get hit and it's just not it's a dumb fight like so it's just that thing of like Dark Souls two players like have their own, like not not players but like huge fans of that game seem to have their own level of smug, <laughs> where it's like, well, you well, need to get good at I, Dark Souls two, and, and then other people are like, Dark Souls two sucks because it doesn't play off of what made you get good at Dark Souls one, right. and I'm just sort of like, they're all really good. That's what's funny um, is uh, most of the people that seemed mad at two because. Uh, when I finally got to into two, and I, of course, I'll caveat for the people that haven't don't listen all the time. I haven't gotten very far into. Um, I, I think just, playing Bloodborne now will fuck you up with two, two probably. Because uh, well, not in the sense that you'll be bad at it, but I think you will not mechanically like not like it as yeah. much. Um, but uh, well, and and I hate to say it because I love Dark Souls, like the setting and the lore and the story, but it's just so much better in Bloodborne too. Like. It's an unfair compare. It's just, it, it, it'd be like take, well, it's like we it's talked about with Assassin's Creed was like, oh, it's pirates versus Roman guys with robes. It's like, well, the one's just inherently cooler to me. Uh, right. it's just because part of Dark Souls is very, very unique, but it still kind of has that just, I don't want to say generic, but the, the tired, medieval. like, it's yeah, medieval, medieval fantasy. Feel. Exactly. Yeah. And well, then they, they do, they take it in really cool places. But it's still kind of a. You're still a knight like with a sword and a shield, right? You know. And Bloodborne, well, Bloodborne, it helps a lot too that your character is basically my favorite type of character from Warhammer, where you're like the witch hunter in Warhammer with uh, a gun and a sword. In this case, they, they're like, yeah, a gun and a sword is kind of cool. What if we give you a gun and a fucking saw that transforms into a bigger saw? It's like, okay, yeah. I'll take it. And of course, there's yeah, other that, other I'm... weapons too, but um, it's just such a cool <laughs> setting. But yeah. uh, that's the game and I've been playing I, and the I most. Think they, and I think they polish it uh, in a way that, like, you know, because I, I remember you even talking about this a little bit. Well, like, the lack of variety and equipment and stuff that's available to you. And, like, like all the armor is very, like, dis- has very distinct advantages. So you can't just sort of look how you want. And there's some truth to that. 
But I think there's something also really cool about that game, just sort of like any weapon you get in that game can be your weapon yeah. through the entire game. Well, and that's the thing is I yeah. just uh, – one of my last few playthroughs found the uh, the Shining Sword Hunters badge, I think it's called, that lets you buy the, what's that, Ludwig's Holy Blade or whatever. Um, yeah. And I think from what I remember reading, that's like some, that's one of those that is up there where people talk about, oh, best weapon. And again, best weapon, the caveat here. Uh, that was every, my favorite. Yeah. When I say best, I mean favorite weapon, because like you said, every single weapon's a viable weapon, more or less. Um, it yeah. just depends on your play style too. Someone like me, I couldn't go to the axe because I, my timing's not good enough for a big slow weapon. And I don't know how Ludwig's Holy Blade is, but, uh, well, it, well, that's what is so fucking rad about it is like, it's, it snaps in like the sword is just a normal long sword. It's like the Kirk hammer, but then it snaps into the great sword part and you two hand that if you need to do more damage and you don't think you're going to get like stuns from your pistol or anything. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's such just a mechanically fucking awesome weapon. Uh, and all of them have really cool features. Like the the weapon transformation stuff, I think, is... Like, I, I like Dark Souls 3 a lot, but I fucking miss that feature. Because yeah. it just... It, it was such a, like... Okay, what fight? What type of fight is this? Uh, are these guys sort of becoming more of a crowd, or is it one on one? And I love that you where know? you start one on one, so you do a few slashes, and how you can just seamlessly like transforming your weapon turns into an attack, like if you chain it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. and and you're so you're just like waiting into you're like slash slash big slash big slash, and it's just it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm to the Forbidden Woods. And, and it was, that was one of those things last time I had played, you know, I'd left off for about a month, month and a half. I had just beat Vicar Amelia and mm-hmm. kind of gone down and killed those two hunters down to the left of her, or I guess, right, yeah. depending which way you're looking. Um, I made my way down to that. There's like a abandoned, like ruin with a doorway that you really shouldn't go up to because it kills you. <laughs> but until you have a certain item, um, so then I was like, I'll kind of check the other way. And that's that Hemwick lane or Hemwick charnel lane. I think it's called, but it's like that little farming village basically. And yeah. I'd got to the, the lamp, the first lamp. And I think that's about as far in as I'd really gotten. Um, then I hadn't played for a while. So then when I first went back to Bloodborne this week, when I finally was like, I need to play this. Um, it was kind of cool. Cause by that point, it's one of those games and you'd even it said, mentioned it. It's like the more time you spend away from it, the harder it is to go back to it. And a lot of it's mental. Like I, I yeah, every- it's, I was just about to say, like, it's all mental really. Cause it, like I went back to the dark souls DLC and there were some adjustments going from Neo to that, but like mechanically, like I, the it, training, the souls games, I was going to say sticks. it hammers it into you so well. It's the whole ride a bike thing. And, and that's how it was. Like I went back in and I was so damn nervous and it was literally like the first few minutes i'm like i don't remember what buttons do what like i didn't remember how to do the blood bullets if you run out of the i forget what they call that but the silver bullets if you run out you can whatever yeah. but that takes just a second and basically if you're not sure hit a button and see what it does which can suck you like oh i just used an item i didn't you know i wasted a I, I just off. stabbed myself for ammo that i didn't, I didn't need awesome right. but uh so that i mean it took a minute or two but basically my first time back after a month and a half off and this is a huge humble brag, by the way. But I made it from that lantern to the Witches of Hemwick, the boss of that area, and beat them without dying. Nice. So, like, but that's what I mean when it bugs me when people are like, those games are just so hard. And it's like, some of it's and luck. It, <laughs> some, like, but Dark a lot Souls of 1 is really, like, when, when your first Souls game will seem really hard. It's just a matter of... Like, how long does it take you to, like, figure out, like, what the game is trying to teach you? And the biggest thing you can take away from it is be careful. Right. It doesn't mean be hesitant all the time, because especially in Bloodborne, you have to be aggressive a lot of the time. But just you have to fucking be careful. And, like, the game will make you pay for your death in some respect, but it's not... It is not the punishing thing you got the reputation for. No, there's so many games it, that screw you so much more. They're unfairly hard, and then when you die, it's like, oh, I've played games that if you die in the wrong spot, you're basically like, well, I might as well start over from the beginning because like, you've lost an item or something. 
Well, I mean, you were talking about ukulele and like, you know, think about any other hard platform that you've played, whether it's, you know, recent or in the past. And it's like, how, like, did they feel like because they had just like a normal life system or just a regular continue system, like how, uh, like, unfair and cheap it will feel to a player for some of those like terrible platforming challenges or any other challenge in the game really you know by having you know kind of this system that the soul series developed like they have to like they have to make their challenges seem fair because if they don't then people you know are really going and that's when you get like the lords of the fallen criticisms (laughs) and stuff where people are like this game is just bullshit yeah um you know, so like I think it puts more responsibility on the designers to be like, yeah, like if you die, you lose all this shit. But you know, like we're giving you the tools that like you'll want to beat this challenge. You know, and then like you have something like ukulele where it's like I'm dying forty times to a boss that's really not that fun, and, and really they should have that... known it's not that fun. And, and it's and not we like a challenging in an interesting way. It's challenging in like a just a general bullshitty. Yeah bad design way yeah and if i had to like if they had a fucking souls recovery system i would have thrown the game in the trash because i wouldn't want to go all the way back to that <laughs> right. shitty boss you know and, but i want to beat the bosses in a bloodborne or a souls game like because that's fun and you, to you make know, it clear ukulele like that boss fight was hard the game in general is not it's a kidsy platformer um yeah, it's I, a cool one. but the, but just like that that's just the you know easy example right but yeah, it's like I think if anything, the way they design it is more fair than a lot of other games now because those games like have checkpoints and recovery systems that mean they don't have to design their encounters to be fair. You know? If you die, and, it's just like oh, so what? Yeah. So yeah, and I mean like yeah, you, not every game could do like you have to have those systems, but sometimes. You know, you know the like design of it is just being like, well, you know, they'll they might hate this for a while, but they'll respond right back to it. You know, and it sort of plays off the players this assumption that the player is going to be patient enough. <laughs> well, so. speaking of patience, I think that's the area I'm at now because last night I I only got to play for a little bit before we went out, and um, I was at I had just the last time I played, like I said, we talked about already, I died. This, well, the second time I played, I still only died once. And I was having trouble finding the Forbidden Woods. And it was one of those things where I had... I was about to tell you where to go. Well, I read where to go, like, but I was misinterpreting it because the where you go, I had already been earlier. And just I, I felt like I'd already explored everything there, but it was because I had gotten to that gate. But you can't get through it until you've killed Vicar Amelia. Amelia. Right. And the everything that I read was... It was right, but it was pretty bad. It's like, go back to the courtyard with the two giants and then go take the path to the left. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I was just misinterpreting the, the one thing I was reading wrong. But anyway, so I found that when I finally found the Forbidden Woods. And the cool thing is in my attempt to find it, I found a lot of areas back in Yarnum that I hadn't gotten to yet. Um, and anyway, I get to the Forbidden Woods and even there I get to the first, uh, you know, the lantern which i this is you say the games are hard this is the kind of stuff that makes the games hard they're bastards you get to a whole new area and they don't do dark souls 3 kind of went away from it but it's not like here's the forbidden woods and here's your checkpoint it's like here's this whole new area but you'll have about 10 minutes worth of stuff to try to get through before we're going to give you a checkpoint it's like fuck (laughs) because you're just and like you said it's all about being smart being patient not necessarily hesitant but play how you know how to play they they don't yeah. really throw a whole lot of stuff at you that you have no idea how to respond to it's just you tend to if you're like me you tend to panic to things and screw yourself there, there is there is a thing in the forbidden woods that if you i don't know if you are did you say you were through it all or no, no. did you just yeah oh well, there's no. a there is a character in there oh i and, know and i th- and, and he is he's fucking great and I think um, I've, I I was reading because I I I'm not going a hundred percent blind, but I'm also not like intentionally like in my um, like trying to figure out how to get to the Forbidden Woods. You'll read a few things. Like I'm not going out of my way to um, like read about the area and say, okay, I know this is where to go and this is what to expect and this is how the boss fights and this is what you do. Like I'm not 
reading yeah. that stuff. But at the same time, I'm not like so like la la la. Don't spoil anything because the game's been out three years now, two three years. Um, yeah, and honestly, it's like it's a hard game to spoil. <laughs> like if there's somebody who can like break Explain. down the fucking plot, then they're well, better I mean, men than I mean, me. That's uh, one of those games where spoilers come less in the form of story spoilers and more in the form of like, I don't necessarily want somebody to like come into chat and be like, okay, well this is the next boss and he'll have this attack and you'll need to dodge this way and do that. You know, those kind of spoilers. Like I'd rather try to do it on my own. And then if I can't yeah. beat a boss, maybe look up how to beat it. But anyway, if it's the character that I came across it when I was looking for something else, maybe lore or something. And I was like, I feel like I talked to him and I feel like I sent him back to the church and fuck. <laughs> like, no, yeah. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. But it's because they take advantage of me being a good natured person. Anytime you basically, you can find characters behind doorways that are like hiding from the hunt. And at some point you find a safe haven and you can tell them about it. But the whole time, you know, because I'm familiar with From Software, and it's like, yeah, yeah. this is not going to end happy. And then I just, like, kind of came across it today. I'm like, okay, this is that thing I've been waiting for, I think. And I'm sure there's multiple things like it, but yeah. yeah. I'm, you should uh, watch some of Vadi videos, Bloodborne videos. I have, cause, but... Then, like, because they talk about that. He talks about that guy, and, like, some of the like dialogue I didn't I didn't get and like I didn't pick up on in my playthrough like like there's a lot of weird shit in that game like just how like how you see this world versus how like the world kind of sees and, you and the really and cool like, thing about it is you're set your character is an outsider you're a hunter and there's hunters from Yarnum but you're an outsider so this is all foreign to you and you're foreign to them so like that all fits too like thematically yeah, but and uh, but also just like that whole, you know, sort of the philosophical thing that sort of develops as you play more of the game of like, you know, what exactly are we doing? Like, are we actually trying to like control the beast thing, or are we just like here to kill? Right. You know, and it's it's this really fucked up kind of where because there's that hunter and um. Old Yarnum. Yeah, the uh, the machine gun guy. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he literally says like he's just like, yeah, you're no fucking better than any of these beasts. Like you're you're worse because you just fucking like you can kill goddamn anything, and you keep coming back because you're like you have the dream thing right. that just gives you basically eternal life, but you out you like you put no thought into what you're doing, you know. So you're really just like you're the same as them. And they See, get the pass because they're animals now. And, and the, that's kind of the um, point in the story that I'm getting to, too. Uh, because it starts out, and, and part of this is from knowing how to play with our minds, with what we've been, like, with what's been ingrained with, like, other games. Like, just this, we've played so many games, and, and they've talked about it. I've seen articles about it in, like, war games and stuff, too, where we're just, we just know you start a video game and there's monsters kill. That's what you're supposed to do. Right. right. And that's and literally how they... they off that. Right, and, and and they start you with it's a probably because normally I would give a little bit of negative points to this because it's got that like cliche trope where your character basically wakes up from amnesia and you don't know where you are or really who you are. Um, what like you just know you need a you needed a blood transfusion <laughs> desperately, and now like the price you pay for that is like you have to hunt monsters. Yeah, but yeah, and it's, and at the same time it does. In fairness, like in your defense, these monsters do try to kill you on sight. So it's not like yeah, you're yeah. just like slaughtering puppies. But yeah. So for the first part of the game, it's just like, I'm a monster hunter and this makes sense. We're killing beasts. And yeah, you, you learn very like instantly that these beasts were once people. Um, but then you kind of get more into it. And that's where I just also in the Forbidden Woods, when you unlock that first shortcut, you meet, I don't know the person's name, but there's a hunter in there that's got like a bucket for a head. I don't know what that's all about. Oh but yeah. They're part of, and they're like, Oh yeah, we're part of the Legion and we're, we vow to sweep these streets clean of all this filth and we'll kill everything that's out. If it's out there on the hunt night and moving, it needs to die. Who's with us basically is how he's like, do you want to join? And you know, if they present you with that at the very beginning of the game, I'd be like, fuck yeah. You guys sound like you're on my side. Let's kill. But like, 
He's like, come on, join the Legion. I'm like, um. But, but you learn like really quickly, relatively quickly to the game that like every faction that exists in this world is fucked up in some <laughs> yes. way. Like they, and like, so all these like organizations that were like, you know, everybody's like, oh, praise the church. And the, then like the more you read about it, like the church was fucking terrible. Oh yeah. They, the church caused all of this. Right. You know, and, and then, and it's really, it's a really cool uh, setting just on that alone. And then it goes completely like, you, you know, you're still pretty early on, but like, that that story just gets completely bizarre. Yeah, and, and then the things you're and like you realize like the fucking horrors of uh, other dimensions that are pulling all the strings to this just fucked up reoccurring bloodbath. It is it's it's a really weird game, but it's <laughs> it's easily one of my favorites ever. Well, um, last last night I sat down and ventured deep into. The Forbidden Woods seems to be one of the longer sections that I've come to so far. Like I don't know yeah. how it compares to other sections, but it's pretty long. Um, but I, you know, I had the first time, like I said, I, had, I died to the trap. But then I made it all the way around and unlocked that first elevator shortcut. Um, and this is the other thing where Souls has kind of spoiled me. Is as like, oh, a shortcut back to the, we'll say bonfire. You know, it's a lantern. I'm like that right. must mean I'm by the boss because that's always what they were doing in Dark Souls Three. Is You'd, you'd unlock various shortcuts, but you knew you were about at the boss when you unlocked the one shortcut that's like, hey, that initial bonfire that you started at's on the other side. So now you're, you are basically can cut out all that, like, two hours worth of stuff that you did. So the boss must be close. Not in the Forbidden Woods. It's like, yeah, just kidding. Um, and it's all <laughs> no, those, yeah, like... that's part one, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and there are all these, like, snake things. And so I think part of it was I was being extremely cautious. There's three main types of enemies in this area. Um, the snake, I think they're called Viper pits, but they're just basically a ball of snakes and they're pretty slow and they've got a pretty good reach on their attacks and they can do a couple quick attacks in succession, but they're really easy to just hit and back off and wait for their attack animation to finish and then hit and back off. Um, but it just takes some time and there's a bunch of them. So, you know, mm. I went through and I cleared them all out. And then there's those fuckers with the snake heads, like the the villagers, but their heads explode into snakes, or most right of them on. now have already transformed. Another great enemy design. It's That's awesome. Terrifying. I hate those guys. I'm so bad because they're very hard to, uh, I think they call it parrying in this game, but stun with your pistol. Yeah, um, but they've got a lot of health or whatever. Right. Yeah. So if you attack, if I can attack them normally, basically the same uh, strategy, I was doing the like dive forward attack. So you lunge and hit them and then dive back and then wait for the snake animation. Cause they tend to like kind of stop or slow down when the snakes are all going crazy. So you can do yeah. that and repeat, but they have a lot more health. So it takes even longer. So then I would get greedy and try to go in and like repost or parry and, um, it's just very hard to land that on them. Uh, normally you'll interrupt their attack, but it's just hard to get them in that stun for the visceral attack. So there's a lot of clearing out and it just took me forever going through and being careful and clearing this out. Then there's the big freaking snakes that shoot the venom at you until you get close. Yeah. And they're super easy cause they're slow. You just have to, but you have to kill everything around them first so that you can dodge them. Prioritize just, them. Yeah. yeah. And you just circle straight from it. Just, but yeah. it takes forever. And I had got it all cleared and I was feeling where I had to be close to the end of the area. And then I, but you could hear, and they do so good with env environmental, even the audio design. You just keep hearing this like thud, thud, clomp, clomp. And this like big, heavy beast breathing. And yeah. it's like, what the fuck is that? Then I noticed there's a hill with a giant fucking pig on it. And I like started to like walk towards it, and I was like, I was like, you know what? It doesn't look like I have to go this way. I'm not going to bother. But I could take a pig. Yeah. No, I I backed off. I'm like, I'm not oh. going to even risk it. But unfortunately, I had gotten. To, it wasn't until I backed off, but he aggroed on me, and I'm like, well, fuck. And so you know, I lock on, and I'm ready because I'm like, I know he'll charge because at this point, you've already fought one. Um, or maybe I I did in the sewers back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, you can see one before now, but. Well, there's the one that's um, deep in the sewer by where you get the red ribbon. Yeah, yeah. You can, so you do, but you, you don't have to fight yeah, it. Yeah, you don't have to fight it, but yeah. But I have, so I knew he was going to charge, and I'm like, get ready for this charge. 
But it's that thing where even if you know it's coming, it's hard to time. And of course I mistimed it. And he took like 95% of my health down with that charge. But in my attempts to roll back, I still got hit and then I like pinned myself against a tree. So I couldn't keep backing off. And oh, nice. yeah, so he gored me. And it's like, fuck. Because now it's like all that work and it took me forever to pick a, my way down there. But that's when you, you know, you like you pick up the pieces and you're like, okay, now I know where everything is at least, you know, like roughly in my head. So I can go down that path and I can, I don't have to, you know, fight everything. I just have to get back to there and only fight what I need to, to get my goddamn echoes back. Fortunately, um, I had spent them before I started. I had enough, I had like 17,000, which would have been enough to level up, but only once. So even if I don't recoup them, I'm not going to feel like I've at such a loss that I'm like, what do I do now? Plus, yeah. um, I, I've the been boss there is uh, shadow of yeah, shadow of Yarnum. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. and um, well, like it, it might it might give you some fits, but I really enjoyed that fight. Um, I'll if I if as long as I don't miss it, I will I'll summon the NPC help because I always do. I don't feel that that's cheating as long as it's built into the game. Um, it's not cheating; it's just weak. Um, yeah well, you said like that I was watching. and then I tried that with the blood starred beast and that didn't fucking help at all that fight I, was I, you know what oh. I think you should try every boss in these games solo at least once like I was watching a guy play the Dark Souls 3 DLC and like it, I was telling him like oh man you're getting you're getting to like the best fucking some of the best fights in the series and he he was like oh that sounds cool and then like fucking He's summoning like two people to help him, and it's like you're not actually fighting him. You're just like letting <laughs> the other two them distract yeah. him while you stab him in the butt. Like, how is that fun? <laughs> you know, and it's not that like you can't summon help, but I think there is a reward, and, and I've done it plenty of times. But there is a reward to like learning some of these attacks, attack patterns on your own. Sure, and but then, my like, thing is, if I die, I have to run all the way back to the boss again. And I hate doing that. So I want to give myself every opportunity to beat it on the first try that I can. And, you know, as well, it, it does take some away from it, but they're not stupid. Summoning an NPC, and at least so far in Bloodborne, and especially no, Bloodborne, the... Bloodborne, it won't fucking... It doesn't like, guarantee you, crap, you, especially... Well, and especially in this one, uh, is coming up, because that boss fight is fucking three people. Um I, I think it's three. It might yeah, be more. Yeah, no, it's three. Oh. Well, and, it's, yeah. And so, like, you, you know, you can't do the thing where you, like, you aggro him, and then, like, the others just sort of... Attack like, it, yeah. Well, yeah, like, you, you're you going to always have something to deal the, with in that fight. Really, the NPC, all it does is it helps keep aggro of one of them away from all well, the other two, yeah. Sure. Um, or maybe two, depending on how it aggro... It, it does help you split that focus, but... Uh, cause that's one, and I didn't watch cause that's one of those ones that I read about. I was in lore and got to it. And so I know about the fight, but I still didn't want to, there's one thing reading about it. So you kind of have an academic knowledge of what's coming. And then another thing to like watch it. Cause I feel like if you watch somebody fight a boss, it's, yeah. but anyway, that is, but that is one thing about, you know, once again, going back to the difficulty thing, it's like, if you play it, you know you can summon things. So right. if you're really just like you, you know, you really don't want to have to go through the struggle of learning a boss for multiple hours, then, you know, I understand not everybody is as crazy as I am, but like you can summon people. So that's not really an excuse of like, oh, tough, tough boss fights. Like you, you can summon as, as many fucking people as your heart desires. Yeah, and I've not summoned any actual human beings, and I'd, I'd like to get through Bloodborne without summoning like player no help. human help. Right. Uh, that, that's that's a weird line to draw. Well, it just because <laughs> it feels like it's a. I mean, yeah, you could get what I had in Dark Souls Three, where like I lost out on like one of the coolest boss fights in that game, where because this guy showed up and hacked his game so that he was just an indestructible chess piece. <laughs> Right. Um, Which boss fight was that? Over. I forget. The, that was the dragon. Dragon second uh, armor. The, the, no, the, 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 oh, the the dragon fucking rider dude. Like when you're in the dragon town. Yeah, I whatever. thought that was the dragon slayer armor. I uh, thought that's what it was called. What? Uh, no, the dragon slayer armor is basically the Ornstein armor. You yeah, fight him. True. What, uh, I forget what that one's called then. But that's a yeah. That's I think 
in that, the, the 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 fucking Dragon King or some shit like yeah it, it, whatever. It, it, the point is, it's a pretty cool fight. And I it's think it was the best the fight hardest. in the vanilla Dark Souls three. I can't speak yeah. for the DLC. So I, I had to like it, but... I had to like join other like I had to summon people for that fight anyway. But like after that, after it got beat in my game, I was like, fuck, I have to like make up for that. And like, so I helped other people with that fight yeah. so I could actually enjoy that fight. Um, but but it, that's one of those, I, they do it with all the boss fights, but it's kind of one of those double edged sword things where it's like you summon people for the fight, but the more people you summon for it, the tougher the boss is. And like yeah, from a health I, point uh, perspective and the damage he does yeah. is higher. It's like, that's uh, why I always summon like one. Yeah. Because you know, because it, you're lucky if you get one person know, who I, knows what they're doing. Well, I, I was going to say, I can't tell you how many times I summoned two people when I was, I was trying to do it, and then they would both die right away. So you're like, now, fuck, I'm still yeah. going one-on-one -on -one against this guy, but now he's tougher. <laughs> yeah. Was, like, that was the thing, like, and, and it made me feel kind of good, though, like, watching this guy stream the DLC, and he's summoning all these people, and he's having so much fucking trouble with the the dragon, the Dark Eater Madeir fight, uh, like it, it made me feel better because I, I did it in like half the time it took him. He was definitely at a way higher level than me too. And I didn't, like I, I realized really quickly that like this fight is easier without help because like they, like they just, because people just don't take the time to like learn how this thing attacks before they're jumping into other people's games. And so they're just getting fucking killed immediately. And then I have to deal with a dragon with a tougher health pool. Right. And it's, and yeah, that's what I'm wondering about easier. the one that it gave me the most trouble. I think even so many people, but I don't see how I could have done it solo either. It was the dancer of Boreal Valley from dark souls three. Yeah. That fight. And she it was, was such an awesome fight, but she was an asshole. I fucking hated her. Like it wasn't a bad fight, but I hated every minute of it yeah no um, it was cause she, she goes me. you get to phase three and she has that chain attack and that was basically where you summon two people and we still i did it a million times and we couldn't do it as a group until we got like the one person that was willing to basically sacrifice themselves we had, i think i had one that was a caster and then yeah. one that was enough tanky enough that they were willing to sacrifice themselves <laughs> to to yeah. like keep it just because that chain attack goes on you're screwed and it dances around the whole damn arena but that the music and the floaty feel and the if it, oh that was such a good yeah. set piece. I was trying to I was trying to think about like why because people were like I was hearing what other people were saying their favorite like Dark Souls one boss fight was, and I was trying to like think about it because there's been so many great fights since then. Um, but then I think back on Dark Souls one and I like most of the boss fights I really fucking hated. Um, yeah, and, um, and they didn't leave like a good taste in my mouth. Seath was pretty cool. Seath was okay. Seath was a little easy. But the easy. fight was pretty, yeah, straightforward. It's just, but, stay it, but, it, was, and, but it, and it was one of those fights that was cool. It was an okay, it was a solid mechanical fight. You knew what to do and it was relatively easy. It took me two or three tries, but, uh, I might, might've been more than that. Cause I think the one night right. I died like a hundred times and then the next time I, like you slap on it and go back to it and it, but, yeah. um, I, I liked the Four Kings fight. I didn't. Um, I fucking hated that fight. That fight made me so mad. <laughs> I liked it because I that rage was like the beat most that like fight. I felt like that. That was like the most rewarded I felt in a fight. Um, because like a lot of the bosses in that game were either like I they were hard in that I thought they were cheap, or they were like just really easy, like straightforward, th like Seath or Nito or something. I think some on shit. the Four Kings, I didn't have my weapon forged enough because you have to be able to burn them down and that's a, that's the other thing you have to keep in mind my entire dark souls experience i got the black knight long sword immediately and like i worked an effort like completely towards equipping that and that has a fire element yeah on it and so. that's i i think i ended up having to go i, I was just no i I don't know. I had to do the elemental damage to my, like it was the one spell I had. Might not have even been a spell, but lightning and fire, I think were what they were. It might've been just fire, but it was just basically one of those where like, it was cool. 
it's straightforward mechanically the you know no when to dodge no where to dodge and fight but i just didn't have the damage to do it the right way so i had mm-hmm. to just like stand toe to toe with them and not even try to dodge their attacks and just hope to heal through them so it, it was a very frustrating fight but it was one of those that when i beat it it was like you beat it by the skin of your teeth and it's very like an awesome feeling yeah. but uh i don't know i liked the gaping dragon because that was a, i think that was the point in the game the first point in that game where you're i was really like what the fuck yeah i, I like the design of the gaping right. dragon i thought the fight was pretty crappy honestly like that, that's the that's the thing i've been thinking about like ranking these games like i think like a lot of people would take issue with it but i think i like dark souls 3 more than one because just like dark like you appreciate where dark souls one started started everything off but like there's a lot of fights in three and a lot of areas in three I want to go back to. Like the idea of replaying Dark Souls one still just exhausts me. Yeah. Well, that's what's it's like so funny too. Is like it's in my memory, Dark Souls one is so like fragmentedly weird because I had to pl- attempt that game like four times, and each attempt I got to v- different parts of it. So like some of it feels so long ago, but uh, yeah. I don't know. It, they're all great games. Yeah, and Bloodborne's the best, in my opinion. Uh, There's more and more rumors that they're going to announce Bloodborne two at E3. I don't think they'll do it. I, I you know, my, as much as I would love it, I'm, I, and I don't, you know, the guy's name. I can't. The creator, uh, Mia something. I think Hide 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 Taka Miyazaki. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything that I've read from him now he could, especially these Japanese developers, I don't know what it is. They seem so like much in glee to completely mislead, not mislead, but like to keep everything cheeky and secret, but everything that I've read from him really, really sounds like they want to do something different, at least next. And then maybe think about going back. So for their next announcement to be dark souls two, it would surprise me. Bloodborne two. No, dark souls two. That would really surprise me. If they they, they announced a game that that came out. Right, they were they, just like, they completely threw shade at their own game. <laughs> They're just like, that ain't the real Dark Souls 2. They do the Nintendo thing, though. They call, call it Dark Souls T-O-O. This is Dark Souls 2. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, Bloodborne 2. It, it would surprise me because I just don't get the feeling that that's what they want to do. But it would be yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, um, the stuff I've seen recently, I, it doesn't... Well, I didn't they already excite. say that they, they plan on doing another Armored Core game? Cause I, I think, never, I haven't heard that, yeah, um, I but maybe all that too. I even got like, <laughs> this is a problem with these games. I can't play them without all of a sudden becoming like completely like obsessed with everything about them. And then like, it's easy to get something else come out or to get distracted or get intimidated and walk away for a while. But then as soon as you start playing it again, it's like back to the lore videos. I even went to the, cause you can go to the um, U S trademark website and search trademarks. And I'm like searching his name and from software's name and bloodborne and anything just to see if anything's been registered. Cause you know, before an announcement, usually they're smart enough anymore in the games industry to wait till about the day of the announcement to have that reg- trademark registration show up. But sometimes you can hit a game and get it, f- um, or they'll register like a working name and I just couldn't find anything. And it's like, come on, give me something. <laughs> you to... should beat the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, before you uh, like start but, clamoring for that. Sequel. And then I did it when I know we've talked about this before, cause I know I've done the exact same search term before in Google, but it was like, okay, Google games with lore as deep, like dark Souls. And I'm not saying that there's not other games that have lore as deep as dark, <laughs> but that do it that way. And it's hilarious because it always leads you to all these forums with that discussion because other people are, you know, want that too. And mm-hmm. at first it's funny because then you'll get people that'll make the back, like, oh, well, you know, Skyrim. And it's like, no. Um, and I, and yeah, I'm not I begging mean, on long, Elder Scrolls. If you're talking in the long term, yeah, if you want to talk long term mythology of just general Elder Scrolls, sure. Sure. But it's a whole different type of, I mean, well, they go about it. I mean, that's literally just like entry, entry, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, yeah. like that style of like worlds that are crafted as well into the, the lore. That, there's nothing. Exactly. That's why, that's why, that's why at Souls first it's amazing. At first it's funny and then it's very depressing because you're like, there's nothing else that souls like yet. Um, 
I, I mean, like, yeah, it, it, like I liked some of the lore stuff in Neo, but not enough to like, you know, watch tons of lore videos on them. I, I don't think they're even. I don't even think that's really a thing. Right. Um, and then, like, you know, you'll it, see suggestions it, 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 like I, I, Fallout Three or any of the Fallout games. It's like true. They have even Deus Ex because of all the like computer terminals, and it's like true. I mean, technically, yeah, that's. But a those bunch are of, like busy work lore that like i don't you know like getting a new piece of armor or a weapon or something and reading the description of it and then like when you're done playing going on youtube and watching people sort of analyze the shit you already kind of got is one thing like deus ex and stuff like that's just reading email right and And it's it's like the same thing it's like here's a text screen and like yeah and like yeah that is a way to build your world but it's not like there's already like an inherent value of like oh I found a thing, you know well like and even if it's not a thing I'm going to equip let's see what it says or right. what it says about the person who had it. Um, and it's even more than that. It's I mean it's it's coming into a room that ne- doesn't necessarily have a big like arrow pointing to it, but there's a statue in the corner where the heads have been smashed off. But you realize the statue is the same as a certain yeah. character from another part of the world, and you're like oh well. This is where the people like started to turn against this particular belief or whatever. You know, I mean, there's just so much of that. Like, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, we we talk about it for hours for a reason because these games insane. are really good. Yeah, and we're crazy. Um, I I I have played some stuff, not not as much as I should. I but. saw you immediately went in and tried drone to death. Yo, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't lying, was I? I mean, that's just a bad that, game. That, that was, was you were spot on, dude. That game is fucking bad. And like, it, holy shit. And it's funny. Well, I've I've grown as a Twitter person because David Scott Jaffe yesterday tweeted uh, a screenshot. And he was good natured about it, but he's like, um, you know, he they've of course he's got to set up a column on TweetDeck to where anytime somebody mentions drawn to death, it shows up. And he's like, That's this is pretty idea. much, yeah, well, he said he, that he would, like I said, he was good natured about it, but he goes, this is pretty much how this column has been ever since we released. And you saw two that were like, this is the worst piece of shit I've ever played. And then there was a tweet that it's probably spam or something. And then underneath it, it was like, this game is awesome. It's so great and addicting. And I just love it. And he's like, yeah, so it's pretty split. And I'm like, yeah, well, those people saying it are awesome or the just completely diluted fanboys that are going to love and, and and you know what your tweet deck column says about your game is not the reception your game is getting necessarily no. like, but I, at least he had the balls to tweet both tweets like and and, and, and no, not I, to call out the other ones like all oh, these people are idiots it was just like yeah this has been a interesting ride like i mean that's the thing like you know i respect it if nothing else like even when it like somebody makes a bad game, and Drawn to Death is a really bad game, um, but like you know that took a lot of work, and a lot of people think, and I see this sentiment a lot with developers on social media, where they're like, I, "Oh, I thought when the game was going to be done, it was going to be easier, but it's harder." It's like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. it's going to be way fucking harder, um, not just in terms of supporting the game, but emotionally, you have to kind of. Like, if you didn't have thick skin before, you have to have it now. Because, like, that's... Because people have no fucking lives. And, right. and I'm, I'm a part of that. And <laughs> I think we all are on some level. Um, but, you, like, people are going to talk about your game. And naturally, people are going to talk shit about your game. And, you know, sometimes it'll be warranted. Sometimes it won't be. But whether it is or not, you, as a developer, kind of have to take that on the chin a little bit. And I think, you know... I, I don't I don't agree with that perspective of like oh this game's awesome this game's shitty like I don't think the dichotomy is quite as fifty fifty as that would make well, it. Well, in seem. fairness, it was too bad and one good. So <laughs> yeah, but I don't even think it's that. No, probably not but, um, because it's a terrible, terrible game. But you know, I I respect if nothing else that like he's not letting any negative reception you know shake him, uh, but. It's fucking bad, dude. Like, I, I did the tutorial, and like and you kind of you. I'd rather have a root well, canal. Well, 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 let's let's start with like uh, how the game starts. I actually kind of liked 
how it opens with you in the classroom. Sure. And, and like, how you, you see these, like, you get the fucking, like, evil jock bully staring you down and shit. And, like, you know, your friend, like, you're looking at, you're taking glances at each other. Like, I like that shit. Because um, they reference that stuff in the world. And I thought that was that was kind of cool. But then you start doing the tutorial and like t- like beating me over the head with like, oh, you need your hand held doesn't excuse the fact that you excessively held my hand. Right. Like you that you like everything in the tutorial is like you have to read fucking everything. You have to hold the button down to get through the goddamn text all the time. It, it's you like you can't like make these jokes about excessive tutorials and then give me a fucking excessive tutorial. Right. Or at least in that way. Like where it's like there's no cleverness to it. It's just like, oh little bitch boy need your handheld. It's no, I don't. So why do you fucking keep doing it? I've played third person <laughs> shooters before. But it continues and, to do it outside of the tutorial, even with the menu systems and stuff. Yeah, all the menu stuff I thought like for what it is, it's really clunky. Right. And it, like it, this shit should be really snappy and fast. And well, honestly, the I'm not they surprised. Re- they rely on from, that. Like you can't just push X. It's like you have to hold X for a second. It's like yeah. And I I know people like twisted metal and shit, and I've had fun times with it. But I'm not surprised that this game doesn't play all that well because I don't think twisted metal is a great example of you know, the most fluid controls and, you know, snappy response times and shit. Um, and, and like in the tutorial, I got stuck on the fucking dumbest thing where it's like, they want you to use your special move where you like send the demon out and you have to activate it. But the precision, like you shoot out this giant ring on the ground and these enemies have a target, which gives them their own giant circumference. And when the rings intersect, you think I could just activate the fucking thing and it would do the damage, but you have to be right underneath those fuckers. <clears throat> I thought you were going to say the the second one that they have you do with that, where you have to like rock out until the thing's head explodes, but it's that moving. Stu- that, 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 that's stupid too, but you just follow the dumb fucking thing around and it's like, it, it's all bad. Like you fucking... So, like, I do the tutorial, and I'm already, like, this was a shitty tutorial, but, you know, at least this frog will shut the fuck up. Um, And then, like, you go into an actual match, and, you know, if the game was fun, I would have played more of it, uh, obviously. But, like, the fact that it wasn't fun, and, I like, the match I got into fucking just technically was completely fucked. Just like I was like, people are jumping around and shit. And it's like, this is a fucking four player arena shooter with very basic like, control. There's not like very, vaulting yeah, very and like running basic. up walls or anything. You literally just run and jump and shoot. That's yeah. It. And it's like, you know, and you're having fucking problems with like the matchmaking. And like when you go into the match, you have to do the long ass like drop into the fucking thing like that should be an immediate like zoom, like right into the fucking shit again you know because there are such better shooters out there that are a lot faster about getting you back into the action or they're paced in a way where you don't want to get back into the action you want to think about like what just happened this has neither um and like just your cursor like your crosshair doesn't move as fast as a fucking like you he really felt like he, his first attempt, attempt mm-hmm. like a, like you said, like a student it's project shooter, attempt right. at a third person shooter. And it's like, you don't understand like the fluidity you need. Like I don't move fast enough. Well, I don't look around fast enough. It feels most people won't be able to identify with this, but I'll go this way anyway. Um, it feels like if you, if you start a new game in unity or, or probably game maker, I'm, I'm unity is what I use it. Whatever. Well, but, some right. one of those. but it comes with like it's comes with its like pre like, oh, here's a third person control like setup. And it feels like they just were like good enough. It's like, no, it's not. Like no. It, and it's all fucking bad. Yeah, it gives like, you the building blocks, but you need to make it responsive and fluid and feel good. And it's like, nope, this is just the basic Literally, yeah. it's like they coded, if you push the stick left, it turns left. And it's like there's no and there's no like flow to the 
like special moves combining with like the regular combat. Right. And like, and just like the, like obviously there's a natural sort of ugliness they're trying to capture visually, but I, I feel like all the, like all the shit on the screen is really fucking like, I was just blocking out parts of the screen yeah. mentally just cause I just, it's not like I said. It's, it's a, not it, pleasant to look at, and it doesn't convey no, useful information. It's a style that looks great in screenshots. You're like, that's pretty cool. It looks like a sketch. It does not look great in yeah. practice. So yeah, but I so that stuff is bad. And the fucking like narrator, like that's you know. I mean, I was prepared for it after you kind of told yeah. me about it, but but it's, what a fucking bad idea. Yeah, like like just you know, if you can't write jokes, don't try. You know, like <laughs> don't, they don't, don't tell nothing. me that. I'll have to stop the show and close my Twitter account. But free free jokes <laughs> on Twitter is one thing, but you're trying to make a fucking game here, right? And like you had nothing for this idea except like, you know, you got the fucking guy coming through your controller occasionally, being like, "Man, I have a fucking huge boner right now." And it's like, yeah. like cool. it's not even something that's witty or like clever. It's just. Yeah, yeah, like, and did I miss that phase of childhood where it was, like, funny to just, like, draw a gun and then write boner 15 times? Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, Well, I mean, even in and of itself, I get that, but you need more than that because eventually, since that's all you have, it's, it's not like, you know, a line like that in the middle of, like, good dialogue would be hilarious inside, well, not necessarily, but could be. Because it's unexpected, but when that's all you're getting is like, it, yeah. Anyway, I assume that's but, not really the game that you were gearing up to well, talk about, but well, I mean, we we yeah, I was going. It was one of the ones I I had to I had to do the part two. We promised it last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my one match of Drawn to Death. I'm yeah. never playing that shit. No, that, again. that's that, not going to be our short. like next Overwatch where for the next two months we're doing Drawn to Death. Cast. It's no. not even the next fucking dish jam, dude. Like it's, I you know, hey, good on them. It's it's free for PS Plus members this month. But I can't help it but should feeling be, like the yeah. whole thing was just a fleece to get money from Sony because you know Sony reimburses those developers when they you know I don't know how because they don't they're not allowed to talk about it. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it's like it, I just feel like it was some big fleece to like use his existing. I shouldn't say yeah, because I like I did because I didn't pay for it and I want my money back. Right. You know, it's like I think it's like, like it just you, doesn't feel like they could have possibly been going after this project thinking it's going to be a great game and it's going to be the next like you, like, it, like it, there it, should it, be they like, should hire me Sony should hire me to play all the games that they're going to put on plus for free <laughs> and I can tell you like and I wouldn't be a dick about it I'd, I'd be like yeah that's perfectly fine you know I it is what it is. And then, like, I could play something like Drawn to Death and be like, fuck no. Like, they're not done. They did not make a game yet. You know, it is it is not fun. Well, you know, what I mean is when I look at it, it, it the sports analogy would be you Probably always hear, yet. oh, <laughs> crap, shut up. Sorry, autoplay video in a tab. Um, <laughs> it, it, sports analogy is like they always talk about even if you're like the athletics, you should go the Oakland A's. You should go out there like you're going to win the World Series every game. You should believe that you can, even though you can't. And I'm just saying that's piss you off. But I don't know how they've been doing this year. But uh, uh, six and seven and nine after today. That's pretty much the Indians. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, but well, but, but you are coming off a World Series yes. appearance. My team is, you know, but. Looking to trade people. My point is, no matter how bad of a team you are, you you if you're in professional sports, you should go out and play every game like you can win it. Even when like you're the only people in the entire world that think you can win it, you should still think you can win it. Now that doesn't always happen. We've seen, we've both rooted for teams that you can tell are just like, well, why? Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. this. But they should. And it's the same when you're making a game. Every time you're making a game, especially if you're, I get this as his indie studio now, but a veteran like like Jaffe, every time you make a game, you should be making a game thinking this is going to be the best of game like this that there's ever been. Um, I mean, scale wise, obviously you're not saying I'm going to like topple call of duty, but you should approach it. Like this is going to be the next like rocket league. It's going to be the next uh, big or whatever. 
But I, I feel I like mean, they never had like confidence in this game. It was just like, we're going to put a game out. Like, here you go. It's like that confidence is one thing. Uh, another thing is like, there's, you would think there'd be some sign of progression uh, of like him, like as a, as a developer, him and uh, him as his team, like that, like they've learned from things he's done in the past and they know how to make, you know, how to make something better. Like, and it's like, would you play this over any Twisted Metal? Fuck no. Mm-mm. Like, and Twisted Metal to me is not that great, you know. So you you would think you would see some progression from him. And to me, it feels like more just like this thing that like they settled on. Like, it'd be easy to shit out, you know, this fucking garbage. And yeah, like, well, I really I, hate this it's game. It's like they spent all their time like just coming up with this idea of like a angsty teenager sketchbook shooter with like in your face humor. And it's like, great, but like flesh out yeah, the actual, yeah. cause even some of that, like, like I said, the humor sucks and I don't, I'm not particularly in the um, target audience for angsty teen stuff anymore, but if it was mechanically sound, it would be great. But it's like yeah, they focused on the wrong just, parts and then they did well, those bad too. <laughs> Well, it, I don't even know, like, because it seems like their focus was pretty evenly distributed of just not giving a shit about any single one part of this game. Like, you, you, you I expect better polish from a four-player arena shooter, or you better be like a one-man team on Steam or something. Like, there's no reason... But that if you're that one-man like, and team on Steam, you should be expecting, like, a couple hundred sales, like... <laughs> right, you know, instead, like, this is, like, the fucking weed, you know, PS Plus freebie game, and, like, and that that's bullshit, because there are small teams out there and, like, smaller games out there that... Oh, the other games know, for you, PS Plus this month are way better than Drawn to Death. Well, you're like, yeah, if that game was just not on there and you put a bigger sp- spotlight on what was already there, that would be better to me. Because, like, this is just, like, people would say, like, well, how can you complain about a free game? Like, it's not for me. It's, like, you know, if nothing else, PS Plus freebies are a platform for developers to get their title out there, get their name known. And it's, like, we didn't need to know David Jaffe was working on a thing. And now we know the thing he was working on was terrible. So why the, like, there has to be some quality control. Yeah. Yeah. but that's you what know. I mean. I feel like it was almost phoned in because it, it's it feel and this could be unfair. This is not a professional like insider knowledge thing, but it feels like he only got it in PS Plus because of who he is and is existing. Because Twisted Metal, the last one was a yeah. Sony exclusive, so you know he's worked with these Sony as a publisher before, and yeah. it almost feels like one of those like the government thing where you get the government contract because your buddy's the, you know, the orange yeah. president, but you really don't plan on doing anything. It's just, I mean, I mean there's a lot of vibe to it, but we don't know. No. It, like I said, it'd be unfair to say that's like, what it is, but it feels like it, it feels like, like, I mean, lot. but I mean, before I knew the reception, this came out, I thought that was a natural fit for BS plus, honestly. Um, but now I'm like, now I'm serious. Like you maybe know, what Sony it should what they should really... have done is if you're not a plus member, they force download this on you. Like that would have been a better like sales. They just need to test shit out a little bit. Yeah. Like they just need to. Well, I wonder like, how much if of that anyone too. played that game. Like they would have been like no. Like it, I feel like if anyone at Sony just tried this, they would have been like no. They just this... couldn't stand. It's like nobody had the balls to stand up to him and be like, "Sorry, David, this just." Not gonna yeah. cut it. He might but, write you three angry tweets. And <laughs> be careful. This legion of fan will come after you. No, nah, I mean, like yeah, at the just, end of the day, it's like you know, I fucking hate the game, but you know, better luck next time. Yeah, exactly. It's, I'm but, not saying know, no. it's not, I, I kind of joked about his his studio should never make another game. That's not true. But yeah, I, I hope they put a little bit more. <laughs> a little Just, bit more of their veteranness well, into the a little next bit game. more of fucking everything, right. like because the yeah. But I mean, you know, it's not like a resentment thing. It's just I, it's I not, really don't know. I do. I really don't know how that got through. No, um, it's just not. It's not good. It's but um. So but I did also. I, I also started playing Darkest Dungeon. Oh. Uh, 
because I, I, I have not been mentally prepared for Nier for some reason. There's just a barrier with Nier, even though they're having the best DLC ever um, where you fight, like there's a Coliseum and you can fight like the CEO of Sony in Platinum Games. <laughs> and, and, they're, and they're just them in their suits and they just shoot their heads at you. Like just <laughs> like just rapid bullet hell fucking pictures of their heads. And that is, I think that's one of the fucking best ideas ever. <laughs> um, that, that's the cool thing about Nier is like you know, the guy, the director of it, just he's such a weird guy and he doesn't give a shit. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I said, I haven't really gotten into that yet. Um, Darkest Dungeon is super, super stressful. Yes. And by that, I mean my all my fucking guys are stressed out after like two rooms of a dungeon and, and I'm on the lowest difficulty cause I like, I knew going into it, it was going to be, you know, kind of that your, your fucking characters can just die and stay dead. And you know, like I didn't, I didn't want a real, you know, challenge with this game. So I kind of took the XCOM approach of like, I just want to, you know, lead a squad of people through this mm-hmm. and Fuck, man! Like even still, like nobody's died on me yet, but they no, all. No, it's worse when they come, don't die because yeah, because they all come out of the goddamn fucking dungeon and they're like, oh, I need to go get a fucking prostitute or something. And it's like, well, just wait till that's start, two thousand dollars, man. Yeah, and then they start developing like multiple quirks. It's like, oh, well, now this player will steal half the loot that you find and also might eat one of his teammates halfway through yeah. the dungeon. It's like, they all get like a fucking negative effect. <laughs> in, in fairness, they get positive ones too, but it, it it's a great simulation of real life because you feel like you're on top of things and then they start to go a little wrong. You're like, huh? And then it just fucking snowballs to the point that you're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you're just kind of staring at everything like I'm lost. And, and I like a lot about it. <laughs> Like, you know, it is that kind of XCOM stressful, like, uh, when you do get out by the skin of your teeth, like, it's a satisfying feeling. But but also, like, there's just so much, and this might just be my mindset right now, is I don't want to manage a lot of shit when I play a game. Um, but it's just like, the you know, there's so much fucking mess of an interface. Whereas, like, they, like, they deliver the shit clearly, but it's like... All right, I got to juggle. Like, who's stressed out? Who can I take with me on the next mission? What do I need to do for the people who are stressed out? Who? All right, after I take care of them, what the fuck can I even like try to upgrade? Mm -hmm. You know, do I do I upgrade the individual characters? You know, and it's do I get new characters? Do I have enough room for new characters? And it's holy shit! Like, (laughs) I just want some treasure. Like, it's it's a really like it, I, I normally, can see the cool things about it, but it's really fucking like <laughs> it, like just how many games are there to just stress you out? <laughs> and it's like right, and that's the thing what too. What fucked up world do I live in where like Souls born fucking games calm me down because <laughs> everything else is just really fucking hard to manage? Yeah, yeah. I th- and and that's what's funny because and I agree with there's just too much to manage in that game for most games i'd give that it'd be a big not even necessarily like a negative like review score but for me i'm bad at man it'd be a negative in that like oh i can't i don't want to play this but i feel like in darkest dungeon it does it the best where it's used as a tool to just literally just to stress you out like yeah yeah and i and i like and with the tone of that game like the intro sequence i thought was really cool like I love the narration mm-hmm. and the there. animation and, and it, 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 yeah. And I like the storyline kind of going on underneath all this. Um, but it's like, it's so fucking difficult to just like right click my steam icon and open that game up after like, I'm not even an hour in, like I've only <laughs> done like two quests ah, and I'm gets, just like, it gets like, better. Just, and by better, I mean much, much worse. It's, but I, I liked it a lot. I mean, it's a game that I'll never beat or never finish. Uh, probably a great streaming game for Halloween because it's definitely a horror game. Like, yeah, it, it's my fucking Friday the Thirteenth. Every time you, every day you play it, 
Because you're going to get unlucky and you're going to get fucked. That's the other part that sucks. It's like your attacks and everything. It's that like Dungeons and Dragons dice roll like. But but at least with the Dungeons and Dragons dice roll, you're doing that with people, you know. Like, well, but I mean, what I mean is like. This is just like even this roll one and you're alone and you have to reflect on that. Well, right. That's what I meant. It's like even if you do it right, which I'm not convinced that there is a right way to do anything in that game. But even if you like do it right, there's that chance you're going to roll and just not necessarily even your roll, but you're just going to like, okay, I need this character that's not missed a shot his entire life to land this shot or else so-and-so is yeah, fucked. Like, and then, of course, hey, they buddy, miss. <laughs> you're hey, like, buddy, if you hit this shot that hurts three people, we get out of here with no harm done. Right. And then like he whiffs and then everybody else whiffs and your healer can only heal one health point. So why the fuck is there a healer to begin with? <laughs> It's like <laughs> if you're not even going to like fucking heal one guy like worth one of their hits, why are you here? Yeah. Um <laughs> I and it's funny because I had not drawn that comparison, but XCOM that it, it's a great comparison as far as a lot of those parts go. Yeah, that that's you know, and that's why I like it. Um cuz I liked XCOM, but it's it's mean. It's also why I yeah, it's fucking mean and it's fucking stressful and it's I I feel yeah. like ninety percent of my games library anymore is are those games that you just hover over and your palms start to sweat and your hands start to shake and you're like, I just can't Yeah, you know, or it's just something like, you know, I don't know like what like near or something's gonna take out of me, you know, like just how much investment I have to put into it, because I can't just yeah, I can't just open that and just start playing it for some reason. Like it's, you know, I, I played a little bit more just to like kind of get out of like after the tutorial, there's kind of like a hub area and I just got out of that and got into like the proper game. But it just like there's something like blocking me from that game. Like because I feel like yeah, I, I just want to play something easy. And it's that's yeah. why I, NHL's still been getting a ton of play for me because it, it's yeah, still I, that. I've still been playing NBA. That's mm-hmm. been most of my time, even even when my team fucking is terrible. But like, but I've been looking at like uh, Flint Hook came out. Yes, and like yeah. I really want to play that, and I, I I have to watch my money. But like, that's a game that like right now, like I just everything in me is like yes, I just want to play that. I, Cause I the, yeah, I was tempted to grab that. Um, and then there's one that came out a little while ago, but I think it's supposed to be pretty good too. Hollow Knight. Yeah, I, like I saw that too, and like, like a game like that, like a game that I can just sort of like throw myself at, you know, it, it, like its walls a little bit, but like not like it, it's not some fucking grand adventure that I'm going on. It's like it, it's a smaller scale sort of game but one that's like engaging and fun to play right. like hey, like that sounds that's kind really of what I was good. hoping ukulele would be and in, in part it is but yeah yeah like if I like if I had ukulele like I'd probably be playing the shit out of that right now even if I you know whether I liked it or not just because that type of game is like what I'm in the mood for right now and it's like I look over my Steam library and stuff and just everything looking back at me is it makes me think like maybe I don't like video games as much. Well, maybe I just well, maybe I just maybe I just like Bloodborne. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe this shit is just too stressful for me. But but the, I know that's just like a phase of coming off of like Zelda and Horizon. Like right, it's, it's now I'm like coming up rare a little right. bit. Yeah, but well, that's what uh, you wouldn't have heard it because of the way my audio setup is. But that blaring trailer that started to play in the stream a while ago that was. Uh, Looking at this announcement that uh, there's a release date for a game called Dead Cells. I don't know if you've seen that. It's kind of like a Castlevania type game. It looks pretty cool. Although it's, um, they call it a Roguevania game because I guess it's permadeath. And it's like, eh. I, 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 Rogue Legacy was a Roguevania game. But yeah. I, I don't know. That's the other thing is like, I don't just want roguelikes. But, no. but right. it's like, but there's a lot of games like doing that shit too. It's like, Everything is either fucking open world or like a roguelike. And then it's, uh, and that's the, like I said, that's the fucked up thing is like Dark Souls <laughs> is the only thing that feels 
mutually like engaging and light enough right now <laughs> for my palate. Like so, and this is completely random. But then, have you seen the the latest um, commercials for Prey? No, I I do know the demos coming out, and I was going to play that, but. I think that's like the 29th they released that. We were actually out to eat somewhere, and I was watching probably the Blue Jackets fuck everything up because Bill Columbus. But um, the commercial came on, and it it's interesting because I think more than anything else that I've seen of it, which admittedly I haven't been following it that close, um, does look so like Bioshocky, but like in space, it's almost like Bioshock and Dead Space had a baby, and yeah. it looks. The way I worded it earlier, I think, is it looks like a game. I think it looks good, and people are really going to dig it. Like, it doesn't look like the kind of game that I will want to play. Uh, you know, I'm not like, oh, I've changed my mind, I'm going to pre-order it, or it's now in my Gamefly queue or anything like that. But it, it looks like it could be pretty legit for what it is. Yeah. I'm looking at the Dead Souls site right now, and that looks pretty slick, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, I like the animation a lot. Um but yeah, like, you know, like, Prey is weird. Like, I know it's got a lot of hype on it right now. Um, but for me, you know, like, I'm wondering how I'm going to feel about it. Because I haven't... It's really It really comes down to Doom and, like, Titanfall 2, uh, like, last year, which were amazing shooters um, from a single-player standpoint. I didn't really get into either's multiplayer. But, um, like... Just, I haven't gone back and, like, I loved Bioshock, and I haven't gone back and played those since I've played those games. So I'm wondering, like, you know, after something like Doom and after something like Titanfall 2, like, you know, would Bioshock hold up? I'm willing to bet probably not. Um, but then, you know, because they, they were always sloppier from a gameplay standpoint. Sure. Um, you know, and once I know the story, does that hit hard at all? You know, so that's like that's really, I think, a lot of what Prey is going to have to depend on is like, you know, how good of a fucking narrative do they have? Well, and, and in fairness, too, it's like it looks like Bioshock, but it could be like you said, Bioshock wouldn't hold up, but Prey is new, so it could be like the modern take on Bioshock, and it, they're different right, teams right. too. Um, but but I mean, you have to even if you didn't like Bioshock, you have to give some props to how it tried to tell its story even if you don't like the story like you know like they tried to make a really atmospheric shooter and for some people it succeeded and some people didn't but that's really hard to do so like you know saying that prey like yeah they might do it but that's a challenge yeah so i like when i see just trailers for it and all i know about the game is like yeah you're in space and you shoot things it's like i've done that so you know, I'm not convinced that the story is going to deliver, but you know, it's not like a, it's not a skepticism either. It's just, you know, a caution of like, you know, I don't have money all the time. Right, so right. Especially if I do for give it, if I, those type of game, like the big, right. And if I do, so if the, like that game has to be amazing, like and particularly coming off the year we just had where I thought we had some of the best shooters ever. Um, you know, so like having another shooter come out, like it kind of has to deliver. And if it doesn't, then I'm okay just sort of ignoring it. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm glad they're releasing a demo. I think they kind of understand what the climate is right now. A lot of people are coming off, you know, a pretty great year for FPS games. So releasing a demo, getting and putting a lot of promotion behind getting that demo out there. And letting people try it, I think, is a pretty good idea. Uh, and too. hopefully that bodes well, because it sounds it speaks towards confidence in your game too. Because you tend to not I, want I, to I put a demo it, out if you don't think your game can hold up to these other games that have come out. But I mean, yeah, but Doom wasn't confident at all, and look what fucking happened there. So maybe confidence is overrated. Real, like, like maybe you know, yeah, maybe like Bethesda and like 2K and shit are just like you don't fucking. Don't put out demos anymore. <laughs> that always ends badly for us. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good, a good thing because I think there are probably a lot more people like me than there are people who are like, oh, I got to play Prey. You know, I think there are more people who are. Yeah, like, and that's let's just. I've I've seen a lot of people in my feed that seem excited about it, but there's a huge difference between like, oh, that looks really cool, and I'm going to actually buy it. 
Like, because how many times yeah. do we do that? We're like, yeah, that game looks cool, but then none of us we don't play. Yeah, it. I got a, I got twenty three games on my Steam wish list right now that we're all just like, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> that looks cool. I don't know when I'll buy it, and they've been on sale. I, I was gonna say and we've I, talked about that. It's I've decided if it's on my wish list, that usually means I'm never going to buy it. Like that's more like my. I mean, I buy shit off my wish list all yeah. the time. And I move shit to and from there all the time, but it's there's still so many, like and there's said, stuff on there that I'll never buy. And I'm too dumb to like remove it. What, what my the rule that we probably should have is like if your thing on your wish list goes on sale for two dollars and you don't buy it, then you're not right. going, you're never going to buy that. But I do that all. I mean, the time. I mean that's yeah. I mean, and that's not true in my case. Like, there's been a lot of shit that's been on sale, and it's like, oh, fuck, I wish I could, but I gotta, you know, when you're unemployed, you gotta right. watch your shit. Or even um, if it, you have the money, but it's like right now I'm in the middle of Or you have a lot of bills. And yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that comes. And the funny thing is, that I've got a few things, and I'm sure you're the same, but I've got a few games on my wish list that seem to go on sale like every other week. Yeah, and but that, they, like, that even drives the de- week design. sales. Well, and it always drives my desire to buy it even lower because it's like, well, I know it's going to be on sale again here in like yeah. two days. So, yeah, I, I mean, for me, it's like, you know, I know there will be a major steam sale at a time when I have money. So I'm OK letting sit, let, letting shit sit there for a while. So, but yeah, that you um, sit shit sit. Yo, I can't say that. It's too. I shouldn't say <laughs> it anyway, shit, but she shits, she shits down by the she shits by um, the shit shack, the shit sack. Uh, yeah, that's a show. I yeah, think we could call yeah. it a show. Um, I gotta, I gotta deal with a dog who's sick. Hey, this is this oh, is. I was great, hoping you meant like you have a deal with a dog. Like I, I, got I gotta go make a business deal. proposal to a dog. No, like my bitch face, the lovable pup, uh, shot on my stairs today uh, before I could like get up and let her out and stuff. So like, it was nice of her to wait. And then when I did let her out, she just like exploded diarrhea. Nice. And At it least was one of the, held that for the outside. Like, yeah, totally. Cause it was like the shit in the house was normal poop. And then just like, and then it was, it was horrifying. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen. Because I've seen dogs who have been sick like that, but I've never heard it make such an explosive sound. Like it was like cartoonish, <laughs> just like. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dog? <laughs> she sprung a leak. And yeah, and then like she comes in and just chewing on a fucking bone like nothing. Yeah. Like that's just normal for her because she's evil and from like she's from the abyss, um, and she just fucking blue dark matter all over my backyard <laughs> that's what i was gonna say it's just that was some of her evil essence that wasn't diarrhea it was just yeah that, yeah totally so so yeah i gotta make sure she's not yeah good dead. luck with that <laughs> hope you don't slip on anything and on the I, stairs and, yeah, on the way down i just go outside i outside my room and just fucking and the walls are just coated <laughs> in my fucking brothers and like a cocoon of it and just like what the hell but yeah well, that's true yeah good Thanks luck for, Thanks for watching.